For two full days in January 1943, Nikola Tesla lay dead in a $2 a night room at the New Yorker Hotel. No funeral. Seven crumpled dollars, a saucer of stale milk, and a do not disturb tag as his epitaph. While the Manhattan skyline outside pulsed with the very currents he'd imagined decades earlier. How does the mind that wired our world end up debating whether it can afford crackers? Trace the arc backwards. Edison's smear campaigns, Marconi's patent heists, a midnight lab fire that erased a decade of notebooks, and a single torn contract that vaporized what would today be billions. Rewind with me through lightning storm folklore, AC Via's DC street brawls, and boardroom ambushes. By the time we return to that silent hotel room, you'll understand why the brightest light in electrical history died in darkness, and why every outlet you touch still quietly whispers his name. Midnight, 10th July, 1856, Smiljan, Croatia. Thunder shakes a wooden farmhouse. A bolt splits the sky. The midwife whispers, child of darkness, and Mother Juka, an untutored but ingenious maker of household gadgets, replies, no, a child of light. That spark threads Nikola's life. By six, he recites epic poetry and does mental math faster than adults. His priest father hopes for a cleric, but the boy's mind already hums with machinery. Tragedy strikes when older brother Dane dies in a riding accident. Grief triggers blinding inner flashes, gears, shafts, whole engines rotating in perfect silence. Teachers accuse him of cheating. He's simply reading the air. Sleep comes only after counting breaths, vowing someday to tame lightning so no child fears the dark. The storm outside passes. The one inside Tesla has just begun. Graz, 1875. Tesla storms the Imperial Polytechnic, takes double course loads, studies 3 a.m. to 11 p.m., and posts such perfect marks, the dean writes his father in disbelief. He photographs textbooks in his head, solves blackboard problems, then recites the steps backward. By 20, he juggles six languages. Obsession tilts to ruin. Roulette tables consume his tuition. Attendance vanishes. Classmates assume he's drowned in the moor. He reappears in Budapest, soldering switchboards, until a sunset walk ignites the vision of an AC motor with no sparking brushes. He sketches it in park dust while quoting Faust. Paris hears the rumor of a man who tunes dynamos by ear. Edison's managers hire him on the spot. Boarding the train with one suitcase and a glowing reference, only two men understand motors, Edison and this young Serb. Tesla heads west, certain the machine in his mind will spin the world. New York, 1884. Steam whistles and coal soot greet the 28-year-old Serb as he steps off the liner with a single valise, four copper pennies, and a letter from Thomas Edison. Only two men truly grasp electric motors, myself and this Nikola Tesla. Inside Girk Street Works, foremen watch the lanky newcomer place a stethoscope against a bulky dynamo. By pitch alone, he pinpoints a warped commutator bar fixes it in 20 minutes, and earns a nod from the wizard himself. For three sleepless months, Tesla wades through battery acid at midnight, realigns armatures by dawn, and sketches turbine upgrades on lunch receipts. Power outages across lower Manhattan plummet. One clerk jokes they should meter him instead of the current. Then manager Sam Insull, half teasing, half testing, dangles a fortune. Re-engineer the whole DC system and you're $50,000 richer. Buy yourself a city block. Tesla attacks the puzzle like chess played blindfolded. Six weeks later, a prototype hums so quietly, workers pause to see if it's even running. 
Edison inspects the blueprints, puffs his cigar, and says, Fine work, Nick. But you don't understand our American sense of humor. Laughter ripples. Tesla's face drains. Fifty grand isn't a joke to an immigrant who once pawned his coat for supper. It's the lab, the patents, the freedom he crossed an ocean for. Disillusion snaps into resolve. That night, a thunder-smeared Bowery watches him walk coatless through puddles lit by the very lamps he improved. By morning, he's jobless in the world's most electric city, possessed by a heresy. Direct current is a short-range mule. Only alternating current can cross continents. He will polish no man's obsolete machine again. From this storm onward, the war of the currents is personal, and Tesla, soaked yet unbowed, is already plotting how to make lightning run on his command. Winter 1885. Once celebrated at Gurk Street, Tesla now digs icy trenches for Western Union at $2 a day, palms splintered, coat stitched with pawn tickets. Nights in a flop house lit by DC lamps he once refined, he sketches a strange new machine on salvaged grocery paper, an induction motor. No brushes, no sparks, just a whirling magnetic field. Boarding house mates mock the ditch philosopher, but he drafts until dawn. By spring 1887, tiny investors, one lawyer, one dentist, stake him to a drafty Liberty Street loft. He and two aides wind miles of copper. When the prototype finally spins, the rotor levitates in perfect, silent motion. Ozone fills the room, and rumor races downtown. A penniless Serb has built the future in a broom closet. Rail brake magnate George Westinghouse arrives, watches the motor hum, and offers $60,000 in cash and stock, plus royalties of $2.50 per horsepower. For a man counting bread slices, it is both treasury and vindication. Contracts signed, Westinghouse slips Tesla a $2,000 a month retainer, CEO money in today's terms, and summons him to Pittsburgh to weaponize AC. Overnight, the ditch digger becomes a Pullman car consultant. He sends gold coins to the landlady who once advanced his rent, buys new gloves for blistered hands, and rides west as spring rain fills the very ditches he left behind, rails already humming with the current he's about to unleash. Pittsburgh, 1888. Tesla's whisper-quiet induction motor stuns George Westinghouse who needs a public triumph to bury Edison's DC. The chance arrives with the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. 10,000 lamps, 27 million visitors. GE bids high, sure of victory. Westinghouse, backed by Tesla's confidence, undercuts by nearly a million and promises safer, brighter light. Contract secured, the battlefield is set. Edison responds with gore. Traveling demonstrations, shocking animals, pamphlets dubbing AC killer current, and lobbying for outright bans. Tesla counters on lecture stages, letting 250,000 volts skate over his body to light a bulb. No burns, no danger. Jackson Park becomes a copper forest. Opening night, President Cleveland flips a switch. The fair erupts in white radiance. Lagoons gleam like liquid moonlight. Reporters christen it the White City, and investors finally concede DC's limits. Edison escalates again, backing the first electric chair execution. Grizzly headlines follow, but Tesla calls it barbaric theater and keeps moving. Next target, Niagara Falls. Critics deem it impossible. Tesla sketches fish fin turbines and hunts financing while Wall Street frets. On 16 November 1896, the hydro plant roars alive, pushing power 70 miles to Buffalo. Church bells shake the gorge. Tesla merely nods. By century's end, AC grids web continents. DC shrinks to trolleys and toys. 
Edison sells his DC assets. Tesla returns to New York, a folk hero, already plotting the next frontier, knowing peace is a luxury his currents don't allow. By 1897, the Westinghouse empire, triumphant but broke, was on the verge of collapse. One line item stood out, $2.50 in royalties to Tesla for every horsepower of AC sold, totaling nearly $12 million, enough to destroy the company. Westinghouse called Tesla to Pittsburgh. The inventor in his machine oil scented suit listened quietly. Then, without a word, he tore the royalty contract in half. That gesture erased what would today be worth $300 million. Tesla took a modest one-time settlement to fund a new lab and modest apartment. When asked why, he said no man should choke a friend over the price of power meant for all. Critics called him naive, admirers called him noble. Tesla fed pigeons with jingling coins while his motors spun silently in factories across America, a tribute to the richest pauper the modern world would ever know. Tesla's lab at 46 East Houston looked more like a magician's den than a workspace. Copper spheres, glass coils, and flickering light that made passersby swear lightning lived inside. Working through the night, Tesla chased ideas no textbook had named yet. He made neon glow before Times Square existed, took x-rays before Röntgen, and hurled arcs from a 12 million volt coil like a stage sorcerer. Reporters called him a wizard. Socialites paid for portraits lit by lightning. In Madison Square Garden, he wowed crowds with a radio-controlled boat. No wires, no tricks planting the seed of every drone to come. Between bursts of brilliance, he sketched bladeless turbines, quake machines, and visions of global energy without wires. He charged no admission, welcomed all. Investors fled, notebooks grew, each bore the same stamp. Free power for everyone. Profit seekers left empty-handed. Tesla kept feeding pigeons and chasing the hum only he could hear. Just before dawn on March 13, 1895, fire tore through Tesla's Houston Street Lab, collapsing the roof and turning 10 years of work to ash. Beakers dripped like sugar glass, coils melted into bronze puddles. Years of resonant data, dead language, he murmured. Insurance rebuilt walls, not ideas, Tesla rented a new loft and resumed wireless tests, unaware that across the Atlantic, Guglielmo Marconi was copying his notes. In 1901, Marconi sent the first transatlantic signal. Headlines dubbed him Father of Wireless. Edison joined his board. Tesla's name vanished. The U.S. Patent Office flipped 17 of Tesla's claims. Marconi won the Nobel in 1911. Tesla sued but court stalled. He only wrote, the ether chooses no favorites. Each night feeding his pigeon, he watched the skyline spark with stolen signals, proof that even smoke can be patented if bottled fast enough. In 1901, Tesla convinced JP Morgan to fund a Long Island tower to beam wireless power across the globe. Cruz raised a 98-foot mast crowned by a copper dome. Tesla promised electricity as free as air. But Morgan wanted profit, not utopia. When Marconi beat him to transatlantic radio, the funding stopped. Tesla pawned his furniture to keep the dream alive. But by 1905, the lab was abandoned. In 1917, the Navy demolished the tower. Tesla watched from his window as the copper dome crumpled. No ceremony, just silence. Wardenclyffe's fall broke something in him. Projects stalled, taxes went unpaid, and he fed pigeons with coins meant for empires. The man who once dreamed of lighting continents was left walking past the ruins of a future that never arrived. 
In 1933, Tesla moved into room 3,327 at the New Yorker Hotel. Westinghouse quietly paid the rent. No work was expected. Two trunks arrived, one with old notebooks, the other with lab clothes, plus crackers and pigeon feed. Each morning he fed pigeons in Bryant Park, including a gray hen he claimed glowed with love. Afternoons, he sketched flying saucers and peace rays. Letters to governments went unanswered. Investors wanted radar, not visions. He pawned Twain's cufflinks, then a gold watch from Westinghouse. Staff forgave meal bills. In 1937, a taxi broke his ribs. He self-treated and kept walking the halls each night. On January 5, 1943, he wrote a letter requesting a pigeon sanctuary. Two days later, a maid found him lifeless. Drawer contents, seven dollars, IOUs, a clipping reading, man who lit the world dies alone. Times Square still glowed. The world ran on his inventions, unaware the current had quietly left the man who imagined it. Tesla's obituary ran eight inches on page 23, tucked between shipping notices and war bonds. How could the man behind nearly every modern switch die with just $7? He saw money as fuel, not a goal, giving up royalties, rejecting monopolies, and insisting energy should be as free as sunlight. Investors wanted returns, not revolutions. The 1895 fire erased his proof. Marconi won headlines. Patent reversals made others rich. Poverty and insomnia dimmed his light, but only briefly. Today, his motors drive EVs, his coils charge phones, his radio boat echoes in every drone, Wi-Fi and satellite internet ride theories he once whispered to pigeons. Tesla's failure wasn't in vision, but in timing. His story warns, dream boldly, but build wisely or risk burning out before the world is ready. So when streetlights flicker on tonight, remember the man who tried to pull light from the sky and finally did. Night wraps the world in sparks, city lights, phone screens, glowing roads, all tracing back to a boy born in a lightning storm who vowed to banish darkness. Crack any circuit book. The unit of magnetic flux is Tesla, his motors power EVs, his coils charge phones, his ideas echo in Wi-Fi and wireless grids. Wardenclyffe may have crumbled, but the world now hums with his vision. His true gift wasn't just invention, but permission. To imagine boldly, give freely, and risk everything for progress. He proved that one mind can rewire the world. So next time your screen glows or your drone lifts off, Remember the man in room 3327. The current still flows. The switch is under your thumb. Keep inventing.